Hello and welcome. We are in the dawn of a new era in F1 racing and have thus far been treated to some great on-track battles, and it looks to be an exciting season ahead of us. With Ferrari and Red Bull looking especially racy to start the season, there have been some intense wheel-to-wheel -wheel battles between Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen. The use of the helmet cam in the first two races gave us a much closer view of the Ferrari steering wheel, as well as the information on the dash, which we will shed some light on in this video. The helmet or visor cam was reintroduced last year with Alonso at the Belgium Grand Prix. Great view of that steering wheel. Check out the lap again, but stabilized. Amazing. In the final race at Abu Dhabi, we see Leclerc's visor cam, but the steering wheel and dash are not clear. Let's fix that. The steering wheel. It has come a long ways from the days of Jackie Stewart, Nicky Lauda, Ayrton Senna, and a young Fernando Alonso to the current generation. In the constant evolution that is F1, the steering wheel or yoke remains the primary interface between the drivers and the increasing complex Formula One machinery. Let's first take a look at the main switches, buttons and dials of the Ferrari steering wheel and then go over the dashboard view. On the top left, we have the control for neutral. This puts the car immediately into neutral without having to shift down through the gears. On the top right is the pit lane speed limiter. This sets the upper limit when in the pit lane. This is usually set to 80 kilometers an hour at most circuits and 60 kilometers an hour at some circuits. Over here is the pit confirm, which the driver presses to acknowledge that they will enter the pits. You'll often hear the engineer ask the driver to pit confirm. Pressing the pit confirm button. The pit confirm button is the OK button, Brad. The radio button allows the driver, obviously, to communicate with their engineer or the team. The charge button here on the Ferrari steering wheel puts the power unit into charge mode. This controller button won't actually harvest energy, but rather toggles the charge mode. The harvesting of energy would occur automatically in defined locations through a circuit mapping in the software. On the left handle is the SOC, or state of charge. This control has to do with the deployment of that stored energy. And here that rate of energy discharge can be selected. The diff or differential control for the entry, mid and exit of a corner is controlled by these rotary switches. The diff control allows you to tune the amount of rotation difference between the inside and outside wheels when going around a corner, which travel different distances and therefore different speeds. The oil button sends an additional quantity of oil into the engine when it's needed. For the bottom half of the steering wheel, I will just go over some of the main controls here. Over here, the brake shape, as Ferrari refers to it, otherwise known as brake balance or brake bias, changes the braking force applied to either the front or rear brakes. This can be tuned throughout the circuit as needed to adjust to varying grip and cornering conditions for optimal braking. The drive mode selector is the main scenario control and a few modes to note here are push mode used for qualifying, race mode, formation lap mode and warm up mode which warms up the engine. The engine dial here is the control for engine power with one being the maximum output. Depending on race conditions this would be adjusted for a variety of reasons and tactics. The other remaining dials offer further fine tuning and modes for strategy and specific scenarios. Let's turn our focus to the screen on the steering wheel to explain what data elements the driver can see. Here we see the layout of the Ferrari dash as seen by Charles Leclerc at the Bahrain Grand Prix in March. This is the main dash that is used. There is a condensed version of this, but I will get to that later. On the top left, you have the previous lap time, and on the top right, you have the delta of that lap time to a reference or target time, which the engineer can adjust throughout the race. This is crucial information if the driver is trying to keep a particular pace to achieve some objective, such as an overtake or maintaining a gap to a rival that is charging behind. The four numbers around the large central gauge are for the tire temperatures for each tire relative to some baseline. It's unclear whether this baseline is provided by Pirelli or that it is internally derived target temperature. Here on this view, it's hard to see, but on this alternative dash view, you can make out these four numbers. Now the main gauge in the middle, which is the current gear, is the primary information on the dash and can be easily read, likely through just the driver's periphery vision. The speed and RPM are available right here. 
Watch Leclerc's dash here, showing him shifting down through the gears. This figure on the right is the brake bias or balance. This is set by the driver on the steering as shown earlier. And here he would get a clear readout as to what that current setting is. The lap number indicates just that, the lap number. Along the bottom is the battery state of charge. This number gives the battery pack charge level and below that is a visual representation of that charge level. Here you will see during the Saudi Grand Prix, Leclerc will deploy the battery pack and you will see the indicator showing decreasing charge remaining. On the bottom right and right edge of the screen, there is another number with a graphical indicator. It is believed this has to do with the battery regen as we can see here with Leclerc under braking. We can see it changing. Have a listen and look. I wanted to end by showing an alternative view the driver has access to. It shows some additional information. Here we see a negative 2%. And then also this figure of plus five, which I believe has to do with some reference to number of laps. We will be releasing a follow-up video to further explain some of these additional components. Thank you for watching and please subscribe for more videos on F1 news and analytics. We will be releasing new videos weekly. Until next time.